We're back and we're doing another build. I've just been really enjoying sitting back and building in The Sims and wait, I just like signing the videos like this because it means I get to go and just pull down the green screen. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm hitting my chair. Well, that'll do. All right, let's jump into the build video. So I decided to start off on a sort of, uh, what, 20 by 30 lot. I wasn't really sure what I was gonna build. I kind of had an, you know what? Let me fix the green screen. Down there is the screen. Oh, it's going back up again. Uh, okay. Let me try one more time. All right, that's better. Let's let's go. All right. All jokes aside, uh, so this build, I, I knew I wanted it to be contemporary. I wanted it to have some sort of cantilevered roof. Uh, I started off doing like a platform base and then having the house on top of it but it kind of really quickly started looking like the house I built for the Snowy Escape expansion pack. Uh, and even similar sort of colors with the wood and, and all that. So I, I quickly, you know, added a little bit more to it. But yeah, I, I wanted this to be something much more contemporary considering the last thing we built was the big uh, British countryside manor or estate home, which if you haven't seen that, uh, click the link down below or I'll put it up as a card. That was a lot of fun. I'm going to be doing a lot more on that as well because that's part of a let's play which we'll be continuing soon. But like I said at the moment, I'm just having a lot of fun just chilling and building in Sims. It's been a while. Like I just put on a TV show, I load up the game, I just start building and it's a lot of fun. It really, really is. And um, I think it turned out well. So this, yeah, originally it was the single story home and then because I had to change it up anyway, I just added, I was like, let's add a second story. We can get a lot more space into this thing. And then I also... It did originally, it, it kind of started off as a two bedroom home, but I kind of furnished the interior like it was for a whole family. Like we had the, a big living room and we have a big kitchen area, which you'll see in a little bit, obviously, once we move in. Um, so I was like, we probably need more than just the one or, or two bedrooms that we had. But yeah, I think it turned out really well. I actually used uh, sort of wooden brown frames on the concrete down the bottom there. Then I was using black frames uh, upstairs and on the little extruded extruded? I don't know, the overhang cantilever part. And yeah, I wanted to use some more platforms in this build. So this house is actually on platforms, not foundation, because that allows you to give the illusion of it being like split level. And it means I can do stuff like at the front of the house there where I have the single high platform and I put the uh, sort of, I guess, little clovers or I don't know what it is, the ivy or something along it. I don't know, it just looks like a nice little planter, which I thought looked quite good. Um, yeah, and I love using platforms for that kind of detail for garden beds. Obviously you could also use like the half walls, which work pretty well, but uh, the platforms are always nice. Now on the side, I, this side of the house was always gonna be a big flat wall and I actually really liked the exposed concrete look. I love the contrast between that and the natural, well, the natural looking wood. Although it's kind of like a wood siding, so it'd probably just be a, a, a thin panel that just goes on top. But it looks nice, and I like the contrast between that and the concrete. I think that works really well together. So originally, this is what the sort of back of the house was starting to look like. This changes quite a bit once I change the size of that side section of the house, so we'll see that a little bit later on. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the build is pretty simple. It's basically just two rectangles, a big T-shaped house. Uh, stairs still glitch out with platforms though, so I have to pick up and replace them a couple of times. Slightly annoying. Now, I didn't go overboard with windows on the upper section of the house, because again, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. Uh, most of the windows face over the flat roof part of the house. There's like, I think there was like one or two on the other side. But yeah, keeping that other wall pretty blank for the most part. Also, which I thought was kind of a good thing, because if, you know, your neighbor's house is right there anyway, you don't want too many windows looking directly that way. Although it's a sim, it doesn't really matter. But that was something I was sort of taking into account when I was building that. Uh, so the entrance of the house is just there to the left. Um, and then I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the front. And I thought because in real life with our current place, we're actually looking uh, to build a carport uh, out the front of the house. So I thought, you know, let's, let's build a carport in sims. And then I can have it exactly, you know, what I imagine our house will look like, which looks nothing like this, but, and it probably won't look like this at all. But you know, I, I thought I might as well draw from the real world and uh, try putting it into this house as well. So yeah, it's actually, it was, the game was really determined to have it join to the rest of the house, but I actually wanted the roof you can see here lower down than the rest of the house, because the lower level of this house is actually the medium wall height, 
but I didn't want the carport roof being that tall because I it just seems like that when you do a carport with the roof like that's a medium or tall wall height it's like way way too high like it doesn't need to be that tall so I separated it from the rest of the structure so I could lower it down um, just put it on some posts a nice roof then I actually did a big half wall there for like a privacy screen to the backyard and then like a front fence here just off to the side so it sort of almost like encapsulates that uh, uh, sort of front carport and makes it like I don't want to, I was going to say secure, but obviously it's not secure, it's a car pop, but you know what I mean, like it just has that sort of uh, separate section of the house, you don't see it directly from inside, but it's also, um, you know, it gives you the privacy to the back of the house, and then just trying to figure out the layout that I wanted to do with the rest here, with the fences and all that, but I think it turned out pretty well. Um, now, I d knock on wood, hang on. I don't think I forgot anything important. There is the mailbox. I already got bins there. And as far as I'm aware, there is a kitchen sink, a kitchen bin as well. Not that you even need it if there's like other bins, but a kitchen bin and fridge and a stove and an oven and bathrooms. <laughs> I think this house I may have remembered everything in. Hopefully, we'll we'll I guess we'll wait and see. Yeah, I, I'm actually really really stoked with how the front of the house turned out. I really like the little carport section. I love where the post box is and the bins and stuff. I like the idea of the bins being underneath the carport at the back. That was quite nice because they're out of the way. They're not like right in your face or anything. So this is where I start doing the floor plan. And as you saw upstairs, I originally just had the two bedrooms. And I think the upstairs floor plan works really well. We've got at the moment, this sort of uh, switchback staircase, which I actually changed later to an L because it made more sense with the layout. Because originally uh, the, the current layout that I was doing, you can see we've got like a step up in the middle, then over to the right is where the kitchen is up higher. And it kind of just, it got, it got very busy. Like there's a lot of different levels, a lot of steps. And it also just takes up a lot of space which is, you know, this house isn't massive. Like it's a good size, but it's not massive. So it seems odd to waste so much space in the center of the house, which I, I like the idea of it, but I think it may be in a larger uh, building, it would make more sense. So anyway, I changed it uh, when I, yeah, there we go. I, I was just like, okay, let me just rework this. So what I've done is I've done the L-shaped staircase along the outside of the house. Um, we still have the stairs going up to the kitchen. In the middle there, that middle room is actually a bathroom and then I actually have to test this uh, and we'll test it at the end of this time lapse. We'll jump into the game and check out the house. But I did a couple of archways that actually go underneath the stairs. Now I could have removed the walls underneath the stairs, but I like having it all filled in because otherwise you just get all this empty space underneath the stairs that you can't actually use. So I wanted the included walls and I put an archway through and the door to the bathroom is actually in the middle of those two archways. And it seems kind of odd at the moment having all these archways there. I mean, it kind of is, but it was really the only way that we could use the stairs in any meaningful sense. So I think I think it works out. I think it looks kind of cool in the end. Now this is where the kitchen is up here. Originally, uh, we have this sort of smaller kitchen space with the island counter and a few uh, breakfast bar stools. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that, but a few a few stools at the island counter there. So it's, it's actually a pretty small kitchen. So I do in, in end up uh, extending it further out to fit a dining table in as well, which I think makes a lot more sense. But yeah, we just got a pretty simple kitchen along there with the fridge, uh, keeping stuff pretty, uh, I guess, neutral in terms of colors. We've got the really rich sort of almost orangey kind of wooden floorboards, which I thought looked really, really nice. Like it was a lot of color. And then I think I was going a little bit too far blank white with the kitchen, but I try to add color with other stuff and the blooming rooms kit is like the best for that. You just place plants everywhere, which is what I already did in the Sims. But with that, it's just a lot more of that. Um, you know, I think plants, I, I wish in real life plants, you know, I could actually take care of them better. I, I'm not very good at taking care of plants. Um, and then if you just get fake plants, uh, they're just, I, I had a lot of fake plants at one point, but then they just get really dusty and it's just not the same. Like it's just not the same with having real plants. We have some now, uh, only a few around the place. We used to have a few more, but we, we sort of got rid of a couple because it was just ended up being too much and we weren't good at taking care of them. But you know, if they looked as good and were as easy to take care of as they are in the Sims, I would have plants everywhere, all over the place. So yeah, just keeping here, you got, a, you know, got a bunch of them here and I thought a little side table underneath this window would be nice. 
and using for the first time the industrial, well, maybe not the first time, but the, the industrial kit couches. I've, I think I've used the industrial kit before, but I thought these couches suited this particular house and I sort of put it with the matching rug. Um, yeah, just a really simple living room setup, the three seater and a couple of armchairs. I do like that sort of look, uh, having the, the two armchairs next to each other. I think I did that in the last house as well, or in the uh, Let's Play house. Now, I don't know if that bookcase is usable underneath the stairs, but I thought it looked cool when I covered that big gap. Um, this living area is, I mean, it is kind of awkward uh, at the moment, the way I was placing everything, but I kind of quickly realized it made more sense if, uh, you know, if I send the stuff to the room and then move the armchairs over the other side, which made a lot more sense. So the, the front door doesn't, you know, open into the, uh, the armchairs. And actually, I should probably flip the front door the other way because at the moment it sort of opens into the room instead of to the side, which would make more sense because you'd have to open the door then like, yeah, it doesn't, I think I need the door to open the other direction. Anyway, we'll, we'll fix that in a minute or two once the time lapse is over. Um, yeah, just really keeping things uh, aesthetic. That's the word, that's the word I'm gonna go with. Very aesthetic. Lots of plants. I do love that plant stand. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay, maybe I do go a little overboard. It, it's so easy to just place a bunch of them. You know, cause there's a lot of like items and little home decor items that I'm, I really wanna place, but they're just not in my game. And I have been for the longest time, pretty much as long as I can remember, just not really using custom content in Sims for the one reason of sharing it with you guys. And this is the, always the reason I've tried to avoid custom content is because when I upload a house for you guys to download and play with, if it's not there and or it's, you don't have it in your game, half the stuff disappears and it doesn't look very good. So I've always personally found it easier to not use custom content because of that reason. Um, but man, some of the stuff lately, like I keep seeing uh, Delicacy posting videos on all these new uh, custom content packs and all the stuff she has in her game looks so good. Maybe, maybe I should do a video where I stole my girlfriend's custom content to build a house. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. And let's not tell her, shh. I think I'll do that. I think that'll be fun. Um, I'll just copy and paste her custom content folder. <laughs> and do a sweet build. Um, yeah, so th this it is a little bit awkward in this space here where like I've got that side table next to the stairs. There's a mirror, got my favorite shelf there, but like everything's kind of like that back part of the room is kind of purely just decorative. I mean, the bookcase obviously you can read books from, so that's useful, but um, a lot of it is a bit awkward. It was a bit awkward to furnish and I was, I was trying to light it as well, get some nice lamps and stuff, but it was a little difficult, but I think it turned out pretty well in the end. And then, we also have, uh, coming up shortly, uh, the back part of the house, which I don't think I show much of. Um, oh, no, 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 I do. I, I think I furnish a couple of the bedrooms um, upstairs and then down the bottom, I just, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do down the bottom. Uh, and then I turned it into a couple of bedrooms because like I, like I was saying earlier, I made the house quite a bit bigger, which at the moment we just have the two bedrooms and the extra, I guess, living room, but I turned that into more bedrooms, which we'll see in a second. But first, we're going to do the little bathroom in between and then we're going to expand the kitchen and dining area. Well, actually just the kitchen. We're going to expand the kitchen area to also include a dining area because we just don't have that at the moment. There's, there's like no dining room. When I made the decision to add, you know, more than two bedrooms, I was like, we probably should have a dining area rather than just three uh, stools. Uh, so I just made the kitchen a little bit bigger. I had to replace the stairs again because as always happens for some reason, the stairs just glitch out on platforms and you have to replace them constantly. So did that. Got a nice big table, did six seats, which I think should be fine because we've got the two double bedrooms upstairs and the two single bedrooms downstairs. So that should be all right. Um, obviously, you know, if you change your house, you know, it'll, it'll differ, but uh, went with the six seater, makes the most sense. It is right up against that door, but that should be fine. It's a big sliding door and it opens from the right hand side. So that should actually work pretty well. Did some pendant lights above, more plants, as you can see on the dining table. So here is where, so as you already know, we've got a couple of archways under the stairs. And then I had to add like another little hallway area with more doors in it. So I, I don't know if it's kind of too many doors down the bottom there, but it was kind of the only way that I could do it with that layout. So, and again, we'll get a closer look you know, at the end of all of this, once we jump into the game and have a look. Uh, but with the added size of the house with the extra bedrooms, I was like, we should probably make this bathroom bigger because we only had two small bathrooms. Now we've got one larger bathroom 
with a separate shower and bathtub and then the upstairs bathroom as well. So it's all sort of working a little bit better with a bit more space now. And I think it makes a little bit more sense to expand it that way with the bathroom. Otherwise it was a bit small. We did have, we did have the shower and tub combo, but that wasn't enough. And now the bathrooms are also, you know, nothing too special. I mean, very wide, <laughs> very wide bathroom, but I don't know. I never really put, I mean, how much, I guess the bathroom could be different, but I think the, the contemporary style suits the rest of the house. Um, so this bedroom, it did have this weird one by two section there. So I actually put a built-in wardrobe into the hallway and I kind of thought of that, that could be like a linen cupboard kind of situation was the idea. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but that's what I did. Uh, so upstairs we got a two, we got two bedrooms. I actually expand the front uh, bedroom as well because at the moment it's only three tiles wide at the front of the house, which was a little small. I mean, it could have been a single bedroom or we could we could have fit a double bed in that thinner bedroom, but I thought it made a little bit more sense to make it a bit bigger. Um, now just doing, you know, these these bedrooms upstairs are actually pretty. Uh, they're not they're not like super detailed. They're pretty clean and pretty minimal. Well, minimal, we got a big concrete wall on it, but minimal in terms of the styling. So it's not like overly decorated, lots of little um, like plant, well, actually there might be some, I think there's plants, you know, there is plants, but not lots of like personalized uh, bits and bobs around the place. You know, it's a little bit more uh, of a blank canvas for you to go in and add what you want. Um, but yeah, we just got a little dresser there and a uh, mirror. Now, actually the wood, color that I did on the floor, that really rich orange. I really like that, but there's not a whole lot of furniture in the game that has that same sort of wood tone to it. So in the bedrooms upstairs, I actually did a carpet so that I could do different wood uh, like that. I did the lighter wood because I would have liked to have done um, wood tones matching the floor, but there just wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of that available. So I was like, oh, well. Now upstairs does have the shower tub combo, uh, like the downstairs did have. So we do have plenty of bathtubs and all that. So it is a good family home for pets and toddlers alike. You know, everyone is invited. Um, so this is the second bedroom. Um, and I was trying to make the window behind the bed work. Uh, I, I did like, I built a big like custom bed head. Well, bed head. I used the sort of marble end table or console table, which I thought looked kind of cool behind that bed. Um, but that window, whilst I did like the look of it from the outside, it was really annoying me behind the bed because it was, you know, off to the, the left-hand side. And it just, it wasn't working. <laughs> it wasn't working. I was like putting these lamps in and then I was like, nope, that's got to go. So I used the same sort of wall uh, lights that I used in the other bedroom and then just did a big picture above. And this one, I don't know if this bedroom's a little too cold, like with the marble and then the blue bed sheets. It, it might be a little, little cold. Um... I don't know, but <laughs> look, it is what it is. Uh, it does have a little, you know, uh, balcony at the front with a huge sliding door. So it's pretty nice. Now, these two bedrooms downstairs, I guess, are just generic kids slash teens bedrooms. You could change them. I think they're, they're probably more kid styled, but um, you could easily change them and, and use them for whatever. But this one's got this sort of loft bed with a desk underneath. Uh, although, funnily enough, this room has the bigger desk and it has a journal on it. The other room has the little desk and a laptop, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I thought I thought the journal was nice, um, and then for some reason the other room got the computer with a small desk, but I don't know. So yeah, just a nice little bed, and we get some bookcases here. Um, I've just sort of finished the furnishing of those. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Outside, keeping it pretty, um, almost like pretty urban city home uh, that you kind of see in Melbourne or Sydney. Uh, there, there's a lot of these kind of homes as well, like this sort of concrete, um, maybe not quite this raw looking concrete, but sort of the concrete build, big uh, sort of fence or concrete wall around it, big rectangular pool and all that stuff, and not a lot of like grass space. That seems to be really common. Um, which I, I personally would rather have a, a, a lawn than a pool. Um, I get the attraction of a pool, but I don't know. I just never really liked using pools or like using pools. So personally, if it was me, I'd rather have a lawn, but <laughs> I'd probably use that more. But anyway, that I did that in this house because I thought it suited it. Uh, the big pool, lots of water, it seems expensive. And I did a couple of swings here because, you know, it's a family home. We want it to be at least a little bit soft around the edges. We don't need everything to be hard, harsh concrete, which mind you, not very safe actually. Um, <laughs> have so much concrete everywhere, but Whatever, the inside's floorboard, so you know, it's not so bad. Um, yeah, just have, you know, making it feel a little bit, um, a little lived in, 
uh, in the the yard, you know, with the pool floaty and stuff and and uh, all that. And then we did a little barbecue area here, which when I did this, I realized probably should connect to the front of the house uh, where the bins are, because it would be useful to have access to a bin. So what I actually did is remove this section here of the platform, put some stairs behind, and I put the half wall back and put like a door. So it was kind of like you could still have it like securely locked away from the front. So you could have like a secure backyard, keeping in mind that, you know, half the property doesn't have a fence. But I feel like fences fully around houses and sims kind of get annoying. Um, <laughs> so we got the illusion of security and you know, I, I think it works. I think it works. I quite like it. So that door there and then the, the barbecue area here, a little outdoor table as well. I was going to put these uh, little couches, but there wasn't actually enough room on this sort of outdoor patio. It's only three tiles wide. Plus you need room for the door to open and, and seems to walk down. So I kept it pretty simple, just a table and then some hedges, you know, nothing too over the top, but that's pretty much it. I think I do a couple of trees on the side of the house here. Cause uh, like I was saying earlier, that's just a big blank wall. Just a little bit of landscaping here and there. But let's go ahead and jump into the game. We'll have a little tour. We'll also have a test because there's actually a few things I'm not sure of whether or not they work. So we'll jump into the game and we'll test those things. But overall, I'm pretty keen with this house. I think it looks great. Let's play it. All right, so here we are in the game. It's a little overcast, so not ideal, but I think it turned out pretty nice. I actually really like this little carport here at the front. Uh, the house, oh, you can really see the difference in the color of the door, can't you? It actually didn't look that different uh, in in the really bright sun, which I don't know if you could tell in the time lapse, but... Oh, actually, that's better. It's still not the same, but I think that's better. Actually, so yeah, what I want to do is what I was saying in the build video is at the moment the door opens this way, which doesn't really make a lot of sense to open in the middle of the room, so I'm going to flip it open that way. That makes more sense. Anyway, yeah, so here's the outside, which I think looks pretty good. I'm really happy with this. I actually really like the little carport, the bins at the back. You could even do like a woodworking table underneath there or something. We've got a couple of lights along the front here. The mailbox, nice little tree feature here. You know, I think it's quite nice. I think it's not too, you know, complicated. It looks reserved, classy. And elegant is what I would say. Nice pool too. Yeah, so that's the outside. Uh, let's go inside now. So we've got, so I think the main floor plan, I think it works pretty well in the end. So we've got, yeah, the living room here as you come in. You know what, let me get back into live mode. But it makes more sense because then we can do this. So we come in here, we have the nice living area, which I actually think feels pretty open because of those stairs that come up there and the stairs over to the right. Oh, they glitched out again. Look, platforms, man, I'm telling you. Okay, well, I'll fix that. Um, yeah, I, I, it feels really open, I think. Like, it feels way more open than the actual size of the room uh, suggests. Also, I guess the taller walls. So we'll go up here, ignore the... Uh, all the furniture that's not there, too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here's the kitchen area, which I think is quite nice. I think this turned out really, really well. The actual kitchen itself is pretty basic in terms of colors, but I, it totally works. Dining area there, big sliding door, big concrete wall there, which actually I really like the look of. I, I love that concrete texture so much. And then we've got the outdoor dining there, nice big windows that wrap around this side. And then back down this way. So this is what I was talking about, the uh, little archways underneath the stairs. Uh, we're gonna have to test this. So, okay, I'm very close uh, to these walls, so they're clipping, but yeah, you walk through here. That's the door to the bathroom. I actually put a smoke detector there. I don't know why I did, but I did though. Uh, bookcase there, I don't know if that works, but I also don't know if that door works. Also don't know if you can walk through here, but we'll find out. Little linen cupboard kind of thing. And then we've got uh, one of the bedrooms here. Let me jump out of that real quick. So yeah, one of the bedrooms here, which is pretty full. Got a sort of feature wall there, mirror, bookcase, little seat, uh, wardrobe. This is the other bedroom. I had a bit of fun with the wall. I don't know, I thought that was kind of cool. A little bit of a different pattern. Uh, bookcase, laptop. You know, looks out to the pool. I think that's pretty, pretty nice. Upstairs, like I said, the bedrooms, uh, this one in particular is kind of a blank canvas. I wasn't really sure what to do with this space. I mean, I guess you could do maybe a little couch or something or a vanity, but it's kind of hard because this is a door that opens and this is like a big window. So I wasn't too sure. Uh, simple little uh, landing area, which I actually really like. I don't know, there's something about the L-shaped stairs, the opening there. This sort of fence that wraps it around down there. I don't know, I think that looks really good. Little bathroom in the middle, which is good. And then another bedroom here as well. None of the bedrooms are particularly like the master, the master bedroom, but you could use either of these. I mean, this one, I guess is, it feels more spacious because there's nothing there, but that one's probably nicer. Uh, yeah, so that's that. That's pretty much the house. Let's just have a check and see if we can actually use it. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, let me also fix these stairs. So if this happens to you, which I'm sure it will, I usually just delete the stairs, pick these ones over here, and then put them back in. Ah, oh, move my little plant there. I put this pl oh, what is all this? Oh no, okay, most of that's from another house, it's fine. Um, I put this little plant here so that the Sims wouldn't put dirty plates on that. <laughs> so that's why that's there. All right, so the stairs are fixed. Let's see, so she's gonna go inside. All right, so let's first of all, let's just see if we can walk through, which I think we, oh. I was gonna say, I think we can. Uh, I guess not. <laughs> okay, that was quick. Can I read something from here? Oh, I can't, oh, okay. Hmm, that, okay, that's actually interesting. I don't, hmm. <laughs> I thought maybe the bookcase is blocking. Okay, can we get in the bathroom? Okay. Wait, this is blocking it. <laughs> okay, let me try removing that and see if that helps. Hmm. All right, this throws a spanner in the works of my floor plan. Is it? <sighs> no. See, normally if those were regular walls, that would totally work. So, I... dang it. All right, I think we have to just go for plan B here and just remove the uh, the stair walls, which I really wanted to keep, to be honest. Uh, it looked a lot nicer. Maybe I just built it wrong. I'm not sure, but... Um... I mean, that's not too bad because we can still have the archway there and the door there. Okay, that's not bad. We just have this weird space underneath here, which I guess I'll put that bookcase back. I think it was just one of these. I mean, that's also kind of, oh, that's kind of silly. All right, if I do it, you know what? I'll just leave it like that. Let's just see if this works. Okay, can I get, can I go to the toilet now? Okay, I can. All right. I, I don't know. I guess that didn't work underneath the stairs, which is a shame. I feel like it, it does sometimes. I don't know. Anyway, that's fine. That works now. Not as good, but still, still works. Uh, cool. Yeah, that is the build. Oh, hello. Walk around the side there. So this house is called H. I, I didn't have a name for it, so <laughs> that's what it's called. But thank you so much for watching this build video. Make sure to leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down below. Sorry that it looks complete. It looks like way more dull than it should do. Because like, it's, yes, it's gray and concrete-y, but it's also overcast. It's not supposed to be this dull, okay? It, it, it looks nicer than this. I'm sorry that this is the end screen that you have to deal with, but... Look, it is what it is. Um, and if you want to download this, I will link it down below uh, once I come up with a name for it. Uh, so you can check it out there. Otherwise, it'll be on my gallery, James Turner YT, all one word. But again, if you if you don't click the link down below, that's usually the easiest way to find it. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time and have an awesome day.